good evening, and welcome once again for another tale of From Spirit's Corner. Today I'm going to be talking about how it is that I came to this awakening of my draconic side. Okay, so it was in the summer of 2001. I was living in Lethbridge and working at their university because they were just finishing up construction on a library and they needed somebody to push a shop back around and suck up drywall bits until they turned into a drooling idiot. That happened to me that to be me that summer. Uh, on this particular day in question, I had pedaled my butt to work early in the morning, and right from the get-go, I had my spirit guide, Dracol, who happens to be a full-blooded dragon, conveniently enough, dancing around me like a little dragon puppy. You know, you just imagine this great, big, ferocious beast of ancient power and strength dancing around you going, I know something you don't know, I know something you don't know, something's going to happen. Over and over and over over again. <laughs> I lasted until the building heated up. They were pressurizing it that day, which means that they had all the doors and windows locked up and sealed tight, so basically it turned into a multi-thousand square foot oven. But that's neither here nor there. Eventually, I got so fed up with him that I just kind of said, GO AWAY! SHUT UP! And I was horrifically surprised when he actually did. Okay, fine bloody spoil sport and he'd poof gone. I don't I don't know how he does it, but he wasn't there anymore. And I managed to finish off my day in relative peace and drag my slimy butt home all sweaty and sticky and gross and smelly and all that lovely stuff and all I wanted to do was throw an ice pack onto my bed and promptly fall asleep on top of it. Which, well, I did. Ah <sighs> It was just starting to get dark when I woke up again. I figure it was about 10 o'clock-ish. I can't remember. I didn't actually write down what time it was. But all of a sudden, I just had this sudden sensation of being poked in the chest. Ah! Look around. Nothing there. And you know, roll over, grumble, moan, complain, fall back asleep. Who knows how much later. Felt like seconds. Poke! Ah! Jolt over, sit up. It was Dracol trying to get me up and about. I didn't want to, but he insisted in his ever so impish draconic way. <laughs> get out of bed, you bloody bugger! You know how it goes. So I managed to drag myself up, and he keeps bouncing around me, going, "Let's run, kid! Let's run! Uh, let's run! I want to see how fast you can go! Let's run!" But I wasn't going to run. There was no way in hell that I was going to run, even with the sun going down and the air cooling off. I just did not have the energy. But I would walk at least, you know, maybe that'd satisfy him, shut him up for the day. So I head outside, I start walking, and the instant I'm outside, he goes, Come on, Ken, let's run, come on, let's run, I'll race you, I'll race you, let's go. <laughs> He'd disappear off into the distance, <laughs> appear right in my face, Come on, Ken, let's run, let's run! It didn't take him long to get me jogging, but that was as fast as I was going, damn it! Which also, of course, still didn't satisfy him, but at least he saw it as a start, I guess, because he let up a little. He was just saying, come on, Ken, let's go faster, come on, let's faster, come on, come on, come on, let's go faster. On and on and on and on and on and on and on. Until I reached my turnaround point when he thankfully disappeared again for a while. I guess he wanted to give me a chance to actually rest, you know, feeling a little bit sympathetic for my lazy ass. So, I stop at my turnaround point, which is conveniently a 7-Eleven, get myself a nice frosty sugar-laden beverage, chug it down, roll around on the ground in pain from the brain freeze for a while, and then finally I started feeling better. I figured, all right, fine, it's a nice evening. You won't stop bugging me. I'm going to run. Why not? Okay. So I do a couple quick little stretches. My muscles were warmed up from the jog already. And I start on my way back home. And I pick up my pace until I'm going at a pretty decent clip. You know, not as hard as I can. And definitely not breaking any land speed records by any means. And this was when, of course, our call kind of popped back around me and started getting a little more serious. You saying, come on, Ken, let's go. You can run faster than this. Go faster, go harder. Go bigger, go home. You know, that usual spiel. However, this time, his tone of voice was completely different. It wasn't that playful, sing-song, little kitty game anymore. It was time to get serious, apparently. 
And the more he egged me on, the more that I got drawn into the seriousness, and the more I was inspired to try and go faster. So I picked up the pace, I started running as hard as I could, it still wasn't fast enough for him, and at the time I felt something building, but I didn't know what, and it didn't feel fast enough for me either. I started just trying to push harder, you know, I could feel the strain in my muscles, I could hear the wind over my face as much as there was, like I said, I'm not the fastest runner in the world. And it was just like I was beating at the door to something, but I didn't know what until it finally smashed open. In this case, while well, it was my draconity, it was like a sudden just torrent of heat and energy poured through me. And a lot of people I know have mentioned that this is probably similar to the sort of endorphins rush you get from any extreme sport or just pushing yourself beyond your limits. However, I am a hardcore downhill skier, I do know what that sensation was, and this was completely different. Sorry folks. It was a heat and a tingle that just burned through my whole body, and all of a sudden I felt weightless. My perception changed, my sense of depth perception especially. Everything just seemed to be in really sharp focus, but absolutely silent. The only sounds were my feet hitting the ground and the wind over my ears. There were no birds, there were no cars, there were no people which was unusual because there should have still been people out and about. All of that aside, this heat kind of spread out for me and gave me the first phantom sensations of this draconic side of mine. You know, wings literally burst from my back and spread out. I right down to the detail of feeling the muscles flexing in my tail as it moved with my run. And not long after I stopped feeling like I was running and started feeling like I was flying. It was like in a dream, even though I was wide awake running down the street in the middle of the evening. You know, I was looking out through my eyes and seeing the trees passing by, the fence on the other side passing by, the ground underneath me, my feet hitting the ground. And then I was also looking out from above myself, like in a dream where you're doing something and then you're watching yourself do it at the same time. When, you, when you're awake, usually you would think that was a little bit unusual, but at the time I was so sucked into the moment that, well, I hardly even notice. And as I ran, I ran faster than I, obviously, than I had ever before. Again, obviously not breaking any kind of records, which would have been interesting, but alas, no. And everything just went silent. Like I said before, it was the most amazing experience that I had ever had. The only problem is that after a while I realized, hey, I haven't been breathing in a while, have I? All of a sudden my body, my body remembered that oxygen is good! Pant, gasp, wheeze, <laughs> oh my god I hurt! All of a sudden the moment just kind of melted off of me. It was like the energy just kind of fell away, just bleh, gone. And all of a sudden, my run turned into a stumble, and, you know, from the smooth pitter-patter of running on the balls of my feet to uh, slapping of, well, being rather flat-footed and stumbling and half-tripping over every little nook and cranny of the road, I realized that I was damn sore and damn tired. So I managed to stumble my way across the street to a little park that I had come up across and, you know, just collapsed against a tree to pant and wheeze and remind myself that I am indeed still alive and that if I wanted to be, I should never do that again. As I was catching my breath, basically my last uh, moment of inspiration from Dracol was, well, for the day anyways, was him just kind of coming up by me and saying, Good morning, Ken. Are you ready for school? And that's, well, how it all began. So, I hope you found this a little bit entertaining and a little bit informative on uh, your intrepid little philosopher over here. I'm pretty sure you can come up with other adjectives that would be just as fun. But anyways, in the meantime, I shall bid you adieu once again, and I shall see you all in my next installation.